Hello everyone and welcome to a 3DFX Voodoo 2 repair video. This Voodoo 2 was sent to me by a viewer. Apparently it doesn't work. It is being detected in Windows, but once the drivers are installed, there is a yellow exclamation mark and no 3D application is working. So we need to figure out what's wrong with this card today. I will give you also an update on Witchery. Basically, I will just show you a newer version. If you haven't seen or know what Witchery is, it is a tool that can debug 3DFX Voodoo 2 cards, but there are already some efforts to make it also work for Voodoo 1 cards and most likely also for later models. But the version I will show and use today is from October 2024. So what we can see here is the output of Witchery. You already can see that there are a few more colors. And if you have seen my previous video, you may see a little bit more information, more details. But let's just see what the output is when we are testing a fully functioning Diamond Monster 3D2. We are starting with stage one, where we are testing FBI and PCI communication. And then there is some analysis performed for the strap resistors. I think this is something that is very new. Those strap resistors are located between the TMU and the FBI memory on the front of the card. Those are just a few resistors that are being placed on different positions and they may be different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Then we have also something new which is that Witchery now understands what type of card it is. So it tells us that it detected a Diamond Multimedia Monster 3D2, which I think was generic in the older version that I used. Stage 2. Yeah, you can ignore this uh, uh, few characters before Ramdak. I think I pressed a button while the test was running. It just recorded it. So we have the connection between FBI and Ramdak. Here also everything is green, so these tests passed as well. Stage 3 is the test for the Ramdak directly. So also looks good, no complaints from the tool. Then we have the frame buffer memory being tested, U456 and 7. All of them passed their tests successfully. And then we have stage 5 where the frame buffer memory is tested. U4, U5, U6, and U7. I think the tool is still not able to test the other memory chips that are located on the back of the board, but I know that the author is working on this right now. So this is how the output looks like for a Voodoo 2 card that is passing all tests. And now we will see what happens to the other card. But first, let's boot into Windows and verify that my Diamond Monster 3D2 is working correctly with the drivers installed and uh, the 3D applications or the 3D benchmark that I'm quickly running. So let's just reboot the system. Okay, so in Windows 98, we go quickly to the Device Manager. And here we can see a Voodoo 2 3D Accelerator. Let's quickly run one of the 3D benchmarks. The Diamond Monster definitely works. The drivers are set up. And now it's time to replace this card with a card that I got from my viewer. Before I plug the card in the system, I checked it under the microscope just to make sure there are no bent pins or touching pins that may cause an issue. So the 3DFX chips look okay. And here in the PCI device listing, device number three in the multimedia device is most likely our 3DFX card. Okay, so we are booting into Windows. And I get a little bit distortion. Oh, and I'm already getting an error message here. Glide init environment. Okay, the Glide 2x DLL expected Voodoo 2, not detected. Okay, so this is already a bad sign. Let's see what we get in our device manager. Okay, nothing. This looks okay. So this device is working properly. Okay, um, let's see what we get when we open our display properties and as you can see there is no black screen and we get another error message 
So this is the behavior of this card. It doesn't want to initialize. I also tried this before. I just went ahead and removed the card. Now let's refresh. It will detect the card again, but it can no longer start the hardware device. We will get the yellow exclamation mark as this one, and this is exactly what the owner of this card told me. This card does not work. So what we will do now is we will leave the card in the system as it is right now, and we will go to DOS and run Witchery and see if Witchery can figure out what's going on with this card. So now let's start Witchery from here. And we can already see that something is happening. Okay, so Ramdak looks fine. FBI stage four looks good as well. Testing FBI frame buffer memory. Okay, so U4 verification. We are running memory tests. So, so far that card looks good. Okay, and the test is complete. Unfortunately, Witchery was not able to find a problem. So let's quickly see from the top. And we have a Voodoo 2 without a name. So this one only has a board ID. The other card was detected as a diamond multimedia Voodoo 2. But it's fine, it's a Voodoo 2 as seen on the fourth line from the top. This is a 3DFX Voodoo 2 Revision 4 Fab 1. Then we have the FBI RAMDAC connection is fine. Then we have the RAMDAC details. And yes, this is a Texas Instruments RAMDAC. And then we have stage 5, which we went through. So Witchery was not able to detect any problems here. Okay, let's run Mojo. Let's see if we find something interesting with Mojo. Okay, so what do we have here? Voodoo board number zero, that's fine. We have four megabytes FBI memory. Oh, we have zero megabytes on TMU. Okay, so here we have a problem. Well, Witchery cannot find problems with the TMUs yet. However, we do have a working FBI chip. We have working frame buffer memory, as it looks like. So at least the card is not completely dead. It was detected by Windows and we could install the drivers, but they didn't work. So let's go now under the microscope and see if we can spot something that's odd. But before we go there, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a reliable partner for your DIY projects or large-scale production orders, then you should definitely check out PCBWay.com. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, PCBWay offers everything from PCB manufacturing and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding and sheet metal fabrication. Their fast turnaround times and top-notch customer support makes them perfect for all your projects. Plus, with their affordable prices, even small batch orders can come to life without breaking the bank. Check out PCBWay.com using the link in the video description and bring your ideas to life. And we are under the microscope. As I said before, I already checked for bent pins before and I also poked a little bit around the 3DFX chips, but I couldn't find any loose pins anywhere. So this card doesn't seem like it has loose pins, even though maybe this chip seems like it got maybe hit on this side here because i feel like these pins are a little bit tilted just a tiny bit in general i see there are a lot of uh, components that are not straight this is something i have noticed while inspecting the card but so far I think it looks decent. I think I have to reflow the 3DFX chips anyway because, well, if you only have one TMU detected and no memory, that may be an issue with 
weak sort of connections. No. Hey, what do we have here? What is going on here? Oh. Hey. Let me switch on a stronger light here. Okay, do we have some broken traces here? That scratch definitely is deep enough to go to the copper area. Okay, maybe this is our problem here. Where do these traces go? These two. And they go to the memory chips. Hmm. Okay, maybe this is our problem here. Let's get rid of the solder mask. No, I think there is no crack. There is nothing on this trace. Yeah, it had a deep scratch, but it was not the issue. Anyway, let's reinforce these traces now. Okay, so this one should be fine. This was probably not the issue. And let's continue to look for other issues. I wonder if... Well, these resistor arrays certainly look okay. But... You see here is a, a dent on the chip. And here was a scratch on the board. This one looks odd. Maybe it got hit. But this looks okay. Let's see, I want to test this with a multimeter. Uh, continuity, 22 ohm should beep. So this one, 47 ohm should also beep. Let's start with this one. Okay. 22, yes, 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 yeah, they all work, I guess. Hey! <laughs> no way! Okay. I have very weird ohm number readings. It goes up and down. I'm in the hundreds and then I'm going down to 40. So something is odd here. This line is not good. 22, 22, 22. Thirty-seven. This one is not good. Let me reflow this quickly and see if we get something else. Maybe I don't have to replace this. Wow, that was such a random guess or like coincidence. Okay. Hmm. 
Let's check again. Nope. No, this one doesn't work. Okay, this is all good, but this one is not. Yeah. Let me check what ohm reading I get here. No, open line. There is no connection. That is odd. It beeped before a little bit. No, now it's completely dead. Ah, I'm getting mega ohm readings. This part is dead. Interesting. So, yeah, let's just get rid of this and replace it. So, I have some low mold solder here. Ah! <laughs> okay. Again. I have seen this so many times and I am really not an expert. But if you see something like a scratch, a dent, a bruise, whatsoever, look around that vicinity. Like this is the perfect example. Sometimes there is more than just one problem. So if you see a scratch, a dent or whatsoever, look around, there may be something else. And here is proof that this is true. <laughs> that could be the problem why this card doesn't work. Wow. Okay, I, I still can't believe that by pure sheer luck to look at this corner, I could have spent easily a few more hours and not find anything. Of course, I have to remove all the solder here because low melt solder is not supposed to stay on the board. I want that clean. Let's take a little bit from here away too. I think I accidentally touched this. We can add fresh solder here. So now I just need to find a 22 ohm resistor array. One time I took a scrap board from the scrapyard and it has all the components I need like one board I can most likely fix many other items so that's the perfect donor motherboards have so many small SMDs if they are from the same era I think it was a socket 7 or or a socket 370 I don't know exactly so let me find a resistor array. Resistor array with 22. Sometimes I harvest ahead of time. Ah, oh, there we go. 22. There we go. Let's see if this one has the correct size. Where are we? Here. Yeah. yeah, it looks a little bit different, but it has the same size. Let's add it to the board. Okay, now let's check again. Multimeter in continuity mode. Okay, so let's see if this trace is now fixed. Yes, 21. 21, 21, 21, and this one too. Yes. Okay, perfect. 
but I don't think I'll be able to figure out where this goes. This trace, as you can see from one side of the resistor array, it goes into this via and then, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the middle layers or on the other side. Uh, okay. Let's just take this as a win for now. And let's see if we find something else on this board. I still can't believe that this one little scratch kind of pointed us in the right direction. Now, of course, I could go ahead and test all these other resistor arrays. But, yeah, uh, I mean, as long as I don't see any other issues, I will not waste my time now probing around in the hopes that I will find another issue. Well, this card needs a little bit of a clean anyway. But first, we are going to try this card with the fixes that we have made. So we fix these two traces and we replace this resistor array. So this is a PCI 3DFX V2 revision A1 and some FCC ID. Okay, otherwise I couldn't spot now anything else on this card. Let's briefly go over the back of the card. So what do we have? Yeah, these uh, SMDs are a little bit crooked everywhere. You see that? Look at this. Why? Somebody placed these by hand? And here is also an issue. And you can see here another scratch, which may have killed this capacitor. Very interesting. Following the damages on the PCB may lead always to the problem. Okay, I don't see anything else here right now. These ones look fine. Anyway, it's a capacitor. I don't think it makes a big difference. But well, since we're already here and you know you have uh, component maps for different Voodoo 2 cards. I think on Vogons there are two right now floating around. If you look up, this one here is a most likely a 100 nanofarad capacitor. So let me check quickly. Okay, I didn't find a 100 nanofarad cap, but this one here, this is a capacitor with 80, so 80. I think this should be okay. I don't see that this should be an issue. The card probably works without. Maybe this is just a filtering cap anyway. So yeah, let's hope this is not a big problem. And then I think we can try again. Maybe this time Mojo will tell us something different. Witchery already told us that everything is okay, but that is because Witchery is not able to test the TMUs yet. So yeah, it's still a work in progress. But at least we could rule out some of the chips that are on this card, for instance, the FBI and the RAM DAC. I think now it should be fine. Okay, and now here. Here we go. Done. So I think that's it. Let's check what we get from Mojo now, or if you have more things to fix. So let's put this card back in the test system and see if we fixed that problem.
Okay, caught it in the test system. And we got a picture, that's good. So let's go directly into DOS and just see what Mojo reports. There we go. Come on. Ah, oh, we have two TMUs and we have four megabytes and four megabytes. I think that's it. This is the entire fix. It was the resistor array. I can't believe it. Let's test it under Windows now. Let's also see if we get this error message when we are getting into Windows. Let's see. No, so far, things look good. Okay, we have our 3DFX Voodoo 2 3D Accelerator. Let's see if we get the tab to work properly. <laughs> it works. Okay. So, that's crazy. I still can't believe it. I would have not spotted this if I would have looked through the microscope for two, three hours. Yeah. Everything looks to be working fine. So let's run these two 3D benchmarks quickly and then maybe open Unreal. I don't have a sound card installed on this system, so it may be a little bit boring, but let's see if we get a proper 3D rendering. Or There we go. I was worried that maybe we'll get some pixel errors or something that would tell us that maybe there is a problem with the memory chip, but no, everything looks good. Yeah, but this card looks fine. So let's very briefly open Unreal and look at the castle flyby. But that's it. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel leave a comment. All of this helps the algorithm. So thank you so much for your time. If you want to support me, you can head over to Patreon. I'm going to post a few extra content there from time to time. And now I will go and work on the next project, which will be a restoration of a 386 board, which suffers from corrosion. And this is purely because if I don't fix it right now, the corrosion will probably eat through a few more layers of this board. And let's see if we can fix it. All right, then take care and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.